Hey guys, and how's it going? Uh, this is going to be part two on this 2008 Mag XT. It's a Chinese truck, kind of a gray market vehicle for this country. Uh, anyway, uh, previous video, we kind of went through it. He bought it, the engine had a dead miss to it. Kind of looked at the underneath of it, the frame's all rotted, and you can see the, you know, blowing out underneath the door. So, we found that it kind of needed a coil. One of the circuits in the coil were no good. Tried finding the correct one for it. You can get parts numbers for it, but to try to get it in this country is uh, be a bit of a pain and probably about a month to get it from China. Having said that, kind of hopefully gonna circ circumvent it a little bit. We got this coil, which is out of a Dodge Neon. Plymouth Neon, Dodge Neon. The little four cylinder, uh, kind of the same setup with it. Has three wires going in and uh, four posts going out. We're either going to let the smoke out of this or possibly it'll fix what is uh, ailing that truck. Uh, further ado, let's get into it see if we can make this thing run better. It's a little tight for filming where it's tucked in there, but we'll do the best we can. So in the last video, we figured out that this was not having any spark coming out of it. And again, uh, number one, number four, number two, and number three cylinders. They are kind of moving in tandem with each other and they're opposite which one has power. So if number one is under the power stroke, the number four would be under exhaust and the same with the two in the middle. So it kind of throws spark out to both at the same time. The other one that's not under power, just it's a wasted spark, it doesn't really hurt anything. What we tried doing is taking number one cylinder and we ran it up and split it into two plug wires. So we're firing both at the same time. After we did that, you're able to pull a spark plug wire off each one and you can hear each cylinder drop out as we did it. But when you went to go rev it, it was still kind of, you know, just crappy and not, it just wasn't right. It's not making the power it should be. A couple of guys were saying that if you put two spark plugs on at the same time, it's just whatever spark plug has the least resistance, it's just going to spark on that one cylinder. That, and that may be true. And that's, you know, of course why when these coils are in there, there are actually two separate coils that are in there, not one uh, powering each one of them. So before we take this apart, let's go take both those plug wires off. We'll put a spark plug in each one and we'll spin it over and we'll see if they're both sparking or, or if it's kind of like dancing between the two. I don't know if it's gonna start or not. It just has the two cil uh, middle cylinders to run on, but let's see what we get. They're both the same plug. Looks like it's sparking both of them pretty good. I wouldn't say it's perfect. But it seems decent. I, it, the theory seemed kind of uh, plausible though, didn't it? And we checked the valves, we had the valve cover off, we checked for mechanical timing on the uh, uh, camshaft to the crank. That seemed like it was okay. All right, let's go see what we can do about getting a different coil in there. Let's see how it runs. Actually it runs pretty good on two cylinders, it's even. Now I just have the back plug. I should probably get rid of this one. Let's get rid of this all together so it's not arcing. We're running on three. You can hear it missing. And if I try four. Oh, you're in there. Peeling for the hole. And all four. So it seems like fairly decent. If you pull each wire off, it'll make a difference. But you gotta rev it, it's just got no balls. And it kind of misses and not misses. And it's just, you know, it's not correct. All right, let's start experimenting, see what we get. It's from a 2005 Dodge Neon with a 2.0. This is where we're looking at right here for that coil. So it has a signal wire, or power wire I should say, and then two signal wires that trigger each bank and make spark on each side of that. It's probably like a number one and a number two. That's the original wiring that would go on a Neon. So my guess is we're looking at that. It has like a little divider in between. I would think that that's probably gonna be the hot post and these two are going to be the signal ones. Unfortunately, I have no other way to kind of really test that, I don't think. Maybe with an ohm meter going across. Or do we just wing it? <laughs> and we got to go figure out on the plug that was on the original coil, this one, which pin is which on this. So essentially, we just have to figure out which one's the power 
And we should be able to get that by putting a test light on, turn the key on, and one of them should light it up, letting us know that, um, which one's getting a signal. Might have to crank it too, but let's go find out. So that's the plug we unplugged. It looks like it's got a red in the center, a brown on one side, and a brown with a blue tracer on the other. My guess the red would be hot. Let's go turn the key on, make sure my light works. You know, hit it to power. It does. And it, we might have to crank it too, I'm not sure. Let's just go try it with a yeah, key on. Let's see if any of them give us anything. Hey, so no one's got power? Watch, they all got power. <laughs> all right, so that's what we thought. So the red one is gonna be power in, and these two are signal. And now we have to figure out the same on the other coil, which one's which. I'm kind of afraid of putting 12 volts into the wrong leg and smoking it, you know. Let's see if we can meter anything out. I would think we would get some kind of resistance. Maybe from one bank to the other. So let's go try. Make sure our meter works. Alright. Try that one. Nothing. That one. Yeah, we're not going to get anything across those. Not really going to tell us. Can we get anything across each other? Three ohms. Get my fingers off it. You know, show resistance across your, your body. You gotta keep your fingers off the probes. All right, that one dances around. Both showing about one ohm. I'm gonna cross these two. Yeah, it's all about the same. So that's, I was hoping to have a difference between them. Like if these two, to that post had 10 ohms resistance and then across the two of them they were open or something and we're just gonna have to wing it <laughs> we're gonna find out so i'm trying to come up with a solution they don't trash all the wires i found these it's not the correct pins for them but they, sh they should be enough to conduct you know that, that style to go on that pin because you know that that plug is not going to work that's in there, it's just the little tiny ones. So I figured we could probably just make little jumper wires and we'll jump across to each one just if we need to go change it. But I'm looking at plug wires too and they have, you know, the post on that is much smaller than the post on that. So I may go look upstairs, see if I have another set of wires that I can just use temporarily. Again, before I trash all this stuff, I started looking into like my stash of, you know, plug ends, but uh, I don't have anything that's gonna really kind of convert over without trashing these. So we go see what I can find for wires. If not, we're gonna cut them up. How about a set of Volkswagen wires? I should be able to clip on there. Yeah, they're kind of sloppy. You can tighten them up. And that and it'll go on the plugs. Alright, no sketchiness involved at all. Let me turn the light on. So we got. I ended up going with power from the center. And I ended up putting power in the center of the coil. I think it's probably a better way it's laid out. You know, if you get outside wire, outside wire, middle power coming in, just makes more sense. And plus that's the way the other wire was hooked up. Eh, you know, going by where that offset of the plug was, was just to make it so you didn't put the plug in backwards. Uh, I think we're good to go. Let's go give her a shot. Let's go turn that light off. Get two plugs ready. And hopefully no smoke comes out. I hear it. They have spark, not a super bright spark, but they do have sparks. That's good because I got one of each circuit hooked up. Also, there's no, um, I don't really have a good ground grounding the coil if it uses that part of the circuit. So let's um, make anything a little bit more permanent. We'll try to mount that to the wall, get new wires on it, and we'll see what we get. Well, I guess before I finish wiring stuff, I should figure out which side is which. So I have right now number three 
going to number three, number four going to number four. Those two input wires could be backwards. I, I don't know. So it's either going to probably run on two cylinders or pop and fire. Let's see what we get. I would say those two are wrong. If I swap these two, hopefully it runs. Let's see what we get. Please. It popped. Hope you're a little flooded too. It's only like hitting on one or two. <laughs> Let's get two more wires on it. See if I run on all four. All right, all four hooked up. <laughs> Let's go for a good time. Oh, that sounds much better. Put some reps. That sounds like it's got it, huh? Excellent. All right, now I'll go butt everything up. So I'm in the process of cutting the wires off and, you know, hooking them up. And I'm looking at where it was mounted. Look at all the mounting holes that are set up for different coils. <laughs> I think they just kind of went with whatever they had at the moment. And uh, two of them line right up so we can bolt right to those without having to get funky. Like nothing was ever changed. The battery's a little bit on the uh, bulky side. The one that would have been in there would probably be about about 20% smaller. And they put that in there. Let's fire it up. Hopefully it still runs. That was pretty good. That's nice and smooth. I don't want, don't want to speak too soon. <laughs> Got a bird. Grab her a little. I wouldn't say perfect. I wonder if the computer is getting a little wacky from like different resistance. Well, before it gets too hot, let's go shut it down. I actually see a check engine light on it too. I don't know if this thing, yeah, right. when it's running. I wonder if this thing has an ODB too in it. Yeah, what's that right there? Let's try to plug it into that, see if anything comes up. The problem is, I don't know what we're gonna be able to call this thing. Let's go. They turn the key on. Mm. What's your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Does what's going to be closest to? I doubt it's going to be. Uh, I don't know. Should we just like make one up and see what happens? Want to go with like I don't know Toyota? Go with Toyota. Gonna come back and say what? All right, we'll go with Japan. Smoke comes out of the dash. Fault communication with ECU. This vehicle is armed with the, the system. This system is an electrical control system. The diagnostic connection, okay. Man, we're plugged in. Keys not all the way on. That's what it is. It's doing something. Yeah, same thing. Alright, can we, uh... I have a feeling we're be a dud. It's literally frying the computer right now. <laughs> yeah, that can tell us. Well, I think the next thing we need to deal with before we even try driving it is the fact that the radiator is falling out. That is supposed to be 
up inside there, not down there. I think the bottom, I looked underneath, the metal was pulled away. I have a feeling somebody probably pulled it out of a ditch and just kind of wrapped it, a, a chain or a, a hook to it. I found the rubber piece laying on the ground. We go grab that, we'll throw those two back in, we'll lift her up in the air and see if we can get that metal re-secured. And we can put it on the, I should put it on that. There we go. Yeah, I'd say it's exactly what they did. They hooked the cable to it right there, pulled it away, and there's the two rubber mounts where it's supposed to be. And it's ripped it right out of there. I would think maybe we just push it right back to where it goes and we'll come up with a jack and we'll try bending it back in place. Maybe throw a couple of tie wraps on it. Let's get a jack underneath it, see if we can get it to, uh, if there's any integrity left, that might be all crap too. I had a yard sale last week and I picked up one of these uh, screw jacks. And if you have a lift, you probably should have one of those. I'm gonna throw some lube on that. I think it's got enough thread. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit of lube, a little bit of a bent handle. We'll see if that can work for uh, pushing that up in place. You like it. it? Should spin like butter. What does that call that butter? I'm gonna take a second and beat that handle straight. You're betting I'm gonna miss, and so am I. I'm gonna smash that bottle. <laughs> huh? Doubt me. Let's see. Probably just get up on it at least. Let's get closer to it. I don't know how much height this jack has before it falls out, but I guess we're gonna find out. Let's go. Do like that. front of the van's just gonna fall off. Kind of hoping it would twist outward. <clears throat> I wonder if we might have to get like a pipe wrench or something on it here and here. Give her a little persuasion, at least get a leaning, because right, I think it's bent so far, I'm just kind of pushing straight on it. Yeah, let's go grab like a pair of pliers or something, see if we can give her a twist. Probably should get it right, right where it's bent the most. We'll come back with the jack. Yeah. yeah, she's crispy. It's all ripped out of the edges. On each side, it's rotted and. Can we get it close? Just touching that one. Kind of touching that one. I guess we could kind of run it up and maybe kind of whack on it with a hammer while we're putting some persuasion on it. We're probably gonna have to come back with a welder though. I don't know if you can see it on the, on this side it's all ripped out. It's not even attached. I'm gonna grab a ladder, go up top, and make sure it's in on the front two, uh, the nipples up there. Both of the top ones are started. Let's give her some crush. How the bottom's looking. Pull down on that, get it straight. You know, I'm just trying to not empty the cooling system. <laughs> Hopefully I don't empty it real fast. 
Start punching through the plastic of it, you know? Let's see if we can. That's how we beat on it. Trying to get some of that metal to curve. Instead of just putting even pressure on it. Let's give her some love taps. This ought to be loud. I'm not sure if we can get that cross member right out of there. We kind of beat it straight. I just think everything's going to break off when we try doing that. We're just going to cause a mess because everything's so rusty. That side's ready to rip right out anyway, so might as well give it a shot. You know, the condenser's in front of it too. The condenser's being held. Looks like it's supposed to be held in two places. All right, we're going to throw uh, a 10 mil on that. See if it'll come off. If not, we'll straighten it out. We'll take it off and possibly weld it back on. I wonder if we should probably maybe hang. I'm going to go back up top. We're going to grab a, like a bungee or something. We're going to hang the radiator in the condenser so it doesn't want to flop down so much. Yeah, that looks professional to me. Well, I'm betting they break off. We'll see what we get. Yeah, surprised. Cruddy one on the other side, though. I can even get on it. Even attached anymore. Try to beat that one on a hammer. everything doesn't come crashing down on us. Get your eyeballs out of the way. Probably would have been a good idea to disconnect that wire for us. Huh? Get some little pliers and get these clips off of that wire. She's a beaut. Look at her. And I'm thinking maybe we can kind of maybe crush it in the vise. Try to get a straight line out of it. And start with that. I just kind of give her some general influence, you know. That's here, right, huh? I think we need a bigger hammer and some uh, vice grips. Awesome fit, fit right over the anvil, but it doesn't. So we're going to use it. Okay. 
best we can. Well, it's, it's definitely better than what it was. Kind of resembles what it's supposed to look like anyway. As you get that bolted back up in there and move on to something else. Well, that was definitely the way to go. Do you need to weld them? Do some washes on the other end. We're kind of get egged out a little bit. And I think we're good to go. Go get those bungees off the top and let this thing back down on the ground. <laughs> you knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I miss it. I think actually can I, I can unbolt these from the top. Yeah. Missed it by that much. Persistence will get you through. Finally. Looks like the radiator's not falling out. Anything else look good up here? I don't see anything. Alright. Let's go roll this puppy out of here and give it a little uh, test drive. See how it does. Trying to close the tailgate and get it to the latch. Flip that up there. And we got a slight misalignment problem. That tab is supposed to be in the center of that. And it's not. And it's not because somebody rear-ended it in the corner of the bed. Just tilt it up. Let's see if we can fix it. Just a hair more. Where were the hinges? Oh, that's got her. It's a little bit of tweaking. Perfect. I got you sitting kind of low. You're on a chest mount, but. See what we get. It's got the weakest backup buzzer. <laughs> Let's give her a couple of revs. Yeah, a little so breaky. Definitely revs better than it did before, though. In an open area. Oh, the wind is a little. Dead stop will give her a speed run. Can you see the, can you see the speedo? Oh, much better on the top end. And then it hits the rev limiter. Hits the rev limiter at 40. But definitely 100% uh, improvement. Hang on. Sells this straight away and dead stop. That's more like it. <laughs> All right, let's go see if we can get rid of that rev limiter and see if we can get it to go over 40 miles an hour. Yeah, back underneath. I would say probably it's coming off the speedometer because it doesn't matter what gear it's in or anything. You know, it's not tack related. It seems like it's 
I'd say it's either going to be that. I'm going to say it's probably reverse light. And this one right here might be our speedo because it's coming out of the tail shaft. If we get it out of there. Do I got to push that, pull that? What do I got to do? Yeah. Let's try it. Without that, let's see if it goes away. Well, my problem is we're not going to have a speedometer. But I think we know second gear was uh, what we were looking at. I'm looking for oil leaks too. I see a little bit of wetness coming down. I could smell it. That might be old from when I took it off earlier. I would think the tack may still work. Should have eyeballed it before. So, well, you guys probably maybe even saw whatever 40 was, which is kilometers, which is 25 miles an hour, where that was on the tack and whatever gear. <laughs> that backup buzzer. It's gonna warn nobody. Well, we can get some kind of crap, crappy muffler for it too. Oh, much better. I know, like the higher end of second gear, it bumped out. Let's see what we get. <laughs> She's fixed. <laughs> I don't know how fast it is. It was probably about 45 or 50, not kilometers, miles an hour. Nice. <laughs> Drifted. <laughs> Hold on. It's getting bumpy. The brakes are good too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Too bad it was a four wheel drive. You gotta figure, like, what do you pay for a golf cart? Like, you wanna use on private property to go putting around? Golf cart doesn't have heat or AC. I don't know, I don't think they do. They're open, you know? Hope that idle's gonna come down or if I got maybe a vacuum line or something off. Either that, I wonder if somebody turned the idle up because it was running on three cylinders before. Turn the idle up to kind of compensate for it a little bit. We'll let it run a little longer too, see if it settles down. I'll punch it and see if it. That would have ripped pretty good. I didn't think it was running right the first time. It would run on four, but it just didn't have any balls. Rotors are uh, kicking rust out. <laughs> Wish I had somebody to film on the outside. Let's go run around the pavement a little bit. Brakes are good. Ha, 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 ha. 
Let's go see if we can figure out what's going on with that idle. We can get that to chill out. Could be a vacuum leak. I might knock the vacuum hose off. But like I said, maybe somebody turned it up because it was running on three and idling real low. That's not going to help things though, is it? I know I had plugged that, unplugged that earlier when we were checking for things. Let's see if that does it. That would probably do it. There we go. Did the check engine light go off? It did. I, we got some other kind of warning on, but the, that was the check engine. Because me being a meathead, that was the throttle position sensor that wasn't in there. Probably even running even better now. Especially the idle's gonna calm down. Maybe you should check the other one that I unplugged. Good. Hmm. Muffler. I don't know if we have any mufflers back here that would kind of maybe help it a little. Only they're good. Pretty much straight through, right? Yeah, it's got some kind of glass back in there. Maybe that. It's like a tractor muffler. What else we got? It's off a lawnmower. And that's the one off the Toyota. That's gonna to be way too loud. It was so loud when we took it off of that. I don't know, maybe, um, where's that one that we just had? This one? You slide ball that, see how close that is to fitting on there. Maybe we could shut it up a little bit because the bottom of the guts are blown out in it. So on the first round, we kind of just welded it back together because it was falling apart. And as soon as I did that, it done blew the center of the muffler out. So it just got just as loud again. So I'm wondering if we can go with that it's looking pretty close to fitting in there i don't know about having a tailpipe on it we really don't even really need a tailpipe but let's hack that off of there it's junk anyway we'll throw the other one on and we'll see how it sounds off the mount and get it out of the way. Yeah, let's see how close. That's the inlet. That's inlet. It's gonna slip right on there. The exact same size. <laughs> Hold the other way around. The exact same size. We can shove a spreader in there. I'm gonna go check it on the tailpipe. I know you can't see. Uh, tailpipe will fit. Actually, I think we're going to make out with the tailpipe. Well, you make out with the tailpipe. Not my kind. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can spread that. I might even have to cut a little bit more off of it. This one looks like it's longer than the other. And if we get that to there, it'll be just fine. All right, let's get a spreader in this. See if we can open it up. I'm sure if I got one that fits. Well, that's going to be... Just right. I'm gonna back that off, close it up a little bit. I'm gonna spread some oil on these. Give it the capacity to, to spread it a little easier. Oh, we'll stop with the jokes. Run that in, grab a socket and an impact gun, and we'll buzz that puppy and see if we can get it to open up. Before we got it off, we're gonna flip it around and do the other side too. Just give us a fighting chance. 
if it fits. Make a couple of different ones like this. They make one too that's like a, a cone. It's just for the outer edge. Too far. You know what's gonna happen. We made out. You get another style. It's like a cone. That's more of like the uh, it got ovaled out or kind of crushed in. You can kind of feather it back out again. Possibly you could even run it the other way around too. I think you could actually like if you had a piece of pipe, you could put this over it and say it was the one that you wanted to go inside this pipe. Of course, yeah, this one you can't because it's hitting. But you could run this one in and, and whack on it and use the taper of the inside to feather them back inward. Yeah, like that tailpipe kind of boogered that's how it was all right so we want to inlets on that side only really matters can we get over that yeah we can get that one let's go try it up top i think we can hear that on there how's the tailpipe gonna look i think pretty decent there we go it worked out too easy. Something's gonna break. <laughs> I gotta beat on with a hammer a little bit, a mallet right in this area, in this area, drive it on there a little bit, and I see if I have any little clamps to kind of go clamp that. If not, I may just put a couple of tacks on it, and then I gotta hang a, make a metal bracket from the mount down to here. If I cut the old one off the muffler, maybe. Only well, found one clamp so far, but subscribers stopped by and dropped off. A stash for us to pick through. And I seem to remember there being. I think we need one and three quarter. One and five eighths, maybe. One and three quarter. One and three quarter. Uh, two. One more. That. Let's go try one of them. See if a one and three quarter will play well. I would say it is close enough. Then it should be one and five eighths. But I think that'll squish down for us just fine. Well, we got play in that. So when we make a bracket, we'll bolt right through the rubber there with that hole. I bent the bracket up and we'll clamp it right in there and it'll be one piece. It'll support it by the rubber and it'll take up some of the play that's on this clamp that's a little too big. Let's get that tucked in there a little bit more. Look good? Remind me to tighten that up. Yeah, let's get that front one. Let's give her a shot. You know, things sound exactly the same as what it did. <laughs> no, that's better. <laughs> it's got a glass back. <laughs> that's too funny. Awesome. Go for a spin. All right, let's give her a rip. We got the uh, exhaust on and the throttle position sensor is in place. Oh, for a car to go away. I missed second. <laughs> Usher runs awesome. Nice. Let's go live. Do some drive-by shots.
It's running a little bit better. <laughs> I think it's too much fun. Nothing pissing out of it. That's a good sign. Nothing broke. I gotta say, so what I got in it, hopefully the wind doesn't get us. Paid a thousand bucks for it and we put 18 bucks in for a coil. Delivered. That's really all we got in it. If you get a golf cart, you know, good golf carts, three grand, 3,500 bucks. And this does much more than a golf cart does. Probably does 60 miles an hour. Awesome. Too bad the frame wasn't so bad. If it was, I'd probably chase you know, trying to get a title for it. But, you know, now it's kind of good for like farm use and everything. Nice seven foot bed. The sides fold down all the way around flat. Maybe get a little bit meatier tires for the back. It seems like it does pretty good. Maybe beat out some of the dents in the corner there. Neat. Got heat, got air conditioning. What else could you ask for? A little side by side for the yard. <laughs> All right, guys, with that, we're gonna sign off. Well, thank y'all for hanging out with me. Have a little bit of fun, bring old junk back to life. And uh, I'm glad the engine in this one was decent. I originally bought this, so I was gonna take the bed, put it on one truck, and try to use the engine for another another truck. That may or may not still happen. I'm not sure, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it together. Anybody has a uh, want to do a trade? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if not, I'm gonna probably just run it for a little while and see how it does. Possibly we'll cut it up, uh, maybe we won't. But for this one, guys, I think we're gonna go sign off. I wanna thank y'all for hanging out with me, having a little bit of fun, doing a couple little donuts. Damn kids. <laughs> Until the next one, I'll see ya. Later. that dent. Think it'll pop out with that. Let's give it a shot. Let's try going in dry first. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> little, little tiny crease up here but with 100 bucks more now.